Hi, I'm Dylan Paris, and I want to talk about iPad music production. Specifically, I want to talk about two apps that I've recently started using that when used together create a workflow super similar to Ableton Live, which is my favorite DAW and my favorite way to make music. Now, the way I found this workflow is a combination of watching a lot of Jakob Hack videos, which I highly recommend, um, and then going through Reddit forums and different posts about how to sequence audio and MIDI in AUM. Now, AUM stands for Audio Unit Mixer, and it is a music app unlike almost any other. It's a true blank slate that allows you to insert audio apps as Audio Unit V3s or Interapp Audio, and then insert MIDI apps as well. Every track is routed to its own channel, and you can group things in buses, but you can also record each channel independently as its own audio track. Now I've been going down a rabbit hole of hardware synthesizers and specifically hardware groove boxes. I used to have an OPZ. I experimented with the Electron Digitact and Digitone. I had a Novation Circuit, an SP404. Very briefly, I had an MPC Live. And all of these devices presented the possibility of creating full tracks in a standalone box, which was really exciting to me. But the limitations of each device led me to go back to software. So I sold all of those devices and I got my MacBook Pro with Ableton Live and I bought back into the iPad ecosystem with the 12.9 inch 2020 iPad Pro. And for a while I've kind of struggled to figure out where the iPad Pro fits in my workflow. iPad videos are my most popular videos without question. People like my iPad content way more than the Ableton content, and I understand why. My channel really blew up with iPad videos to the scale that it's blown up at all. It's been through iPad videos. I think there are a lot of people who make music on iPad because it is a really accessible platform. You think about the cost of hardware to get into PC music production versus you could get a used 2018 iPad Pro this size for like six hundred dollars, maybe seven hundred dollars, and it would be almost as powerful. Honestly, hindsight 2020, that's what I should have done. I don't think I needed the 2020 model. I think I was just being excessive and excited about tech. With all that said, I think the iPad is extremely exciting, and there's something tactile about the iPad. Oftentimes I find myself missing those hardware synthesizers, and the iPad's ability to let you truly interact with the on-screen synth elements is unlike anything on PC, except maybe a Windows touchscreen device with Ableton, but then you run into the issues that come up with Windows as a music platform. Anyway, I won't get into that. The iPad becomes whatever synth app you open on it, but what's beautiful about AUM is that it allows you to have these floating different options at different times. You can have a keyboard floating next to a synthesizer and instantly go over to a sequencer. What was missing for me though, was a central MIDI hub, something that held it all together and allowed me to trigger sounds the way I would in Ableton. And that's where LK comes in. This is LK in standalone. Now originally LK was designed to be used with Ableton. You can put it in live mode and it will connect to Ableton. However, if you go into MIDI mode, it gives you a bunch of the MIDI functionality of Ableton scene view, but with standalone MIDI power. Now where it gets really cool is if we go into AUM, and I've got, I've got the iPad here, but I'm gonna show you this screen here. So if we go into AUM, create a MIDI channel, load up LK, you get an AUV3 grid. Now this little window is like Ableton in its own silo. And you're like, well, how is it like Ableton? If we hold shift and create a track, shift and create a track, shift and create a track, we can see that in the bottom here, we have the output one, two, three, and four. These are MIDI channels. So each of these little clips are routed to one, two, three, and four in the MIDI channel. Now, where this gets interesting is if we create an audio track, let's choose Continua. And we're gonna select none, channel filter one. Another audio track. Let's choose Xeon, my favorite iPad synth. I'm gonna do the same thing, none, channel two. The next one's gonna be a drum synth or a drum app. So we're gonna use EG Pulse, which has its own sequencer, but 
we're going to disable that. We're going to go to a sequence that doesn't have anything playing. We're going to go none and three. And the other important thing that I didn't do is we need to select LK as the MIDI source. So what's special about this compared to Atom, which is another AUV3 MIDI processor, is that LK is a standalone MIDI host with a matrix like Ableton Scene Mode. So I can create a new scene and now you see these blank boxes. If I slide up here and create a four bar sequence for track one, now I have a recordable piano roll routing to Continua. And the final piece that really makes everything work for me is that I can route KB1 in the audio unit MIDI processors here, my favorite keyboard app. This is the glue that makes everything magic. If I can get it right. There's one last step and it eluded me for so long, but you have to hit this M button here and record enable, which is very similar to Ableton. Now we can enable velocity sensitivity. We can go into a basic chord mode. And the way the MIDI is routed is that KB1 is triggering LK, and LK is triggering whichever audio output selected. Now check the magic out. Now that's Xeon. Now we're on our drum app. And we didn't have to do anything in KB. We're just selecting different MIDI sources in LK. All right, so let's get a metronome going. Let's start playing our little loop here. We need to actually create one here, so we'll make uh, four bars. Very easy to do. The trick here is getting things to happen when you want them to. So we're going to record and enable the track and wait till it loops back to one. So our notes are not quantized yet. Now they are. And we can go back into EG and we can change all kinds of stuff. So what if we want a different kit? Not that one. And this is AUF, so we can lower that volume. Turn off the metronome. And we could add something like Cosmonaut, which I really like adding to my drums. And at any point, we can go back into LK, change our MIDI. It's a little loud now, but I hope you're starting to see the power of this. What we can also do here is we have these two different loops, right? So we can paste that loop now of the drum playing. And after a bar, it's gonna go down, right? Wait, there we go. So now we've triggered this next bar. And this is a separate, this is a separate MIDI loop now. So I can start adding sounds, right? Record enable. Now it's got these horrible cymbals playing, but check this out. No more cymbals, because we're changing back to a clip that doesn't have that. And hopefully, you can start to see the power of this. This is Ableton. This is, this is everything I wanted from Ableton. The MIDI triggering the clip, but it has all of the benefits of AUM. Every audio unit that's on iPad that I have, I now have 
control over in a single launch matrix, which isn't an app purchase. These are not free apps, but you put these together and you get this portable, versatile software, hardware amalgam that's expandable in any way you can think. And if you think I'm being facetious, I don't even know how to use my rack. My point here isn't that I know how to use my rack. My point is that my rack is an AUV3. You might be thinking, what's my rack? My rack is an audio unit modular synthesis app. And the amount of modules and things you can add are unbelievable. Dean from Electronasound, uh, a great YouTube channel, he has great videos on how to use MyRack. I've been watching them, but I've not been following along closely enough to know how to use it at all. So I'm not going to use it. My point is that if you combine something like LK with KB and AUM, a lot of acronyms, if you combine those together and then add things like MyRack, Xeon, programmable synthesizers, modular synthesizers, the sound possibilities on the iPad go from fairly limited to anything you can imagine. Are there tech glitches sometimes? Yes. And to me, that's the story of iPad music. That's the greatest failure of iPad music is it's not as stable as I want it to be. However, this workflow seems really solid. And in my time with iPad music, AUM has been one of the most solid music apps. So I'm extremely excited about what the future holds with this setup. I just put out an AUM video, but I wanted to show you this workflow because after I put it out, I started to do more research and I realized there are better ways. My last video, I had Atom Roll, KB1, and an audio unit for every single sound, and I only had one loop per sound, which is already a powerful workflow. But this gives you so much more. This opens up live music potential. This opens up all kinds of things that I'm so excited to see people use. So I hope that if you get anything out of this video, you go and make stuff with this setup. Okay, one last thing before I go, and that is that you have to save LK files in the audio unit separately from your AUM files. So it goes like this. We'll call this video, or we'll call it IDEP, because I can't, I can't type. We'll save as IDEP. And then, and this is just for me, you don't have to call these anything, but what I like to do is I like to call both files the same thing. So I'll also call this one IDEP. Yep, and save session. Now, if I clear the session, normally with audio units you would think, okay, I can just reopen and everything will be what it should be. But you'll see that LK is read it out. You can see in the screen capture. So we're going to tap OK and reload it. And now LK is blank. If you don't save separately, you lose everything you made and it's, it sucks. Hopefully they fix this in the future. But in the meantime, you just tap project, tap IDEP, close project, and we're back where we were. And I'll show you one other project I've done so you can get a sense of what's possible here. Let's load up harp which is one I was doing yesterday. Check I, check OK once it lets me load it. Oh wow, and it loaded the thing right. I guess it only had to reload once, that's strange. But hey, cool. You should still save in both places, but check this out. from scratch for you on video. I'm excited to make more stuff with this setup. I'm still finishing out my album, but yeah, this is this is the future, man. Thanks for watching. Shout out to Reddit, shout out to Jakob Hack, shout out to Dean from Electronic Sound, and all of the people out there who are making the iPad music community just so cool and so fun to be a part of. Shout out to the Sound Test Room and shout out to you. Consider liking and subscribing if you want to see more iPad music stuff and just more of what I do in general. Um, 
I post every week, at least once a week. So thank you for your time, and I'm just excited to see what the future holds for iPad Music with KB1, with LK, with AUM, and with whatever comes next. I'll catch you next time. Peace.